Robert Dunn here from blogthewatch.com with a review of the Louis Money Mechanograph. Now, some of you may have heard about the brand Louis Money, but for those who are not entirely familiar with it, I would like to just um, say a few words about the brand and its heritage before discussing the watch itself. So, it is this year that Louis Money is celebrating the 10th anniversary of the establishment of its workshops in Switzerland. And uh, while that sounds great, it kind of contradicts the date that you can see here on the dial, because the dial says Louis Moinet 1806. So let's just get this out of the way and, and discuss what happens here. Uh, so Louis Moinet was um, a very established and successful watchmaker who used to um, work during the early um, 1800s. And he was, and so he was a contemporary of uh, uh, Abraham Louis Braguet, for example. He sold watches to Napoleon Bonaparte, Thomas Jefferson, James Monroe, and of course a number of other um, prestigious clients. And also Louis, Louis Monet is um, today considered to be the inventor of the chronograph, which is kind of a big deal. Now, we have heard Mont Blanc claim that uh, it was Nicolas Riesec um, who um, invented the chronograph. Now it's, it turns out it's Louis Monet. You can take that information with a pinch of salt, but um, there can be no doubt um, to the fact that Louis Money was in, indeed um, a very successful master watchmaker. The problem was that there was no one to carry on this heritage, and so the name was, uh, and also the heritage was dropped until, again, 10 years ago when the brand, and the, uh, well, rather the name was picked up again and um, the heritage was carried on. So what we have today with Louis Money is a high-end luxury um, Swiss uh, watch brand that has its own in-house movements that are exclusive to the brand. Um, most of them are coming from Concepto, um, a high-end um, Swiss uh, movement manufacturer. And we have this uh, more masculine kind of design with large cases, um, these um, notched um, bezels with the screws in it. and. With the mechanograph, this um, very unusual and uh, um, yeah, very <laughs> very um, uh, unique uh, half-faced kind of look for the dial. So it's obvious you can see here that the dial has been sort of cut in half in the in the center from 12 to 6 o'clock. You have this black, opaque black kind of um, dial with this. Uh, well, it's called Cote de Jura, which basically is just um, a wavy kind of pattern on the dial, which looks fantastic because it has nice depth to it, and it's very uniform, it looks very nice, and it's also cool to see how it has been just cut in half, literally in the center, and it just comes out there. It's, ni it's uh, nicely done, it has some very interesting and nice details, but, and here comes the real deal, of course, as you can see, there's no dial whatsoever between 6 and 12 o'clock, so on the left-hand side of the dial. What you see instead is um, basically the top plate of the movement. So the plate that you can see here with this uh, with this Code de Genève kind of uh, striped um, uh, pattern on it is actually the movement itself. And between 8 and 11 o'clock, there's this skeletonization, which has this highly three-dimensional look to it. You can look into the movement you can see here, it has some very nice uh, and very cool um, depth to it. You can see the fourth wheel in there at the bottom. It's colored uh, in gold. I guess it's um, it's of course it's brass uh, that has been rhodium plated. And then you see this cape wheel spinning around. Deep in there is the uh, poly fork, which you can see there engaging with this cape wheel. If you can see it, it's just very very um, tiny details. I will just um, add some macro shots to this video. And of course, you can see the balance wheel, which is um, oscillating at uh, around the 10 and the 11 o'clock position at um, 4 hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour. So basically, it's turning four times to the left and four times to the right. So it does eight um, oscillations or eight beats per uh, per second, which is um, which is very <laughs> which is of course normal. But once you can see it exposed like this, just running like crazy uh, fast, and you can. It's it's much nicer to be able to appreciate um, the the uh, the workings of a um, of a mechanical movement like this, as opposed to having to take the the watch off and um, and try and admire the movement through the case back, which of course you can do here. As you can see, there's a skeletonization. I think it's it's really very cool. And um, yeah, um, 
I oftentimes hear people being concerned about skeletonization when you're wearing the watch and how you can just how basically you're, you're looking at your wrist and your wrist hair. That's not the case here because here the gaps between between the wheels and the bridges are so small. It's not um, it's not annoying at all. You are not looking at your wrist, but rather just some of the parts of the movement. So the movement is uh, a concepto movement. It's exclusive to Louis Mane. It's been they say it's been developed by. Uh, Louis Mane and Concepto, and uh, it's a time-only movement with with automatic mo uh, automatic winding, with the with the rotor being uh, mounted on um, on ceramic uh, ball bearings, which I think is nice. And uh, of course, it's not unique here. Um, I, speaking of uh, ceramic uh, bearings, that is, but it works. It, it works just fine. It makes the watch uh, wind properly. It's uh, it has. Um, well, not too much. It's 48, 48 hours of power reserve, I guess, at this price point. And especially from a bespoke movement, it would be nice to see something like 60 hours or 72 hours or something like that. But if you're wearing this watch often or you have a winder, um, 48 hours should be uh, should be enough as well. The rotor has the same kind of uh, wavy pattern on it as as uh, as the um, as half of the dial does. So that's a nice touch. And the movement has this more unusual and seldom seen matte uh, gray kind of color to it. So it's not shiny, it doesn't have the um, that kind of eye candy that the um, usual rhodium plated um, movements have, which um, have this silver kind of color to them. Here it's more like matte gray, which is today I think it's considered to be more high-end, um, more modern, as opposed to like the usual silver kind of thing. Um, and it also not matches very nicely the uh, color of the titanium case, because titanium has, also has this greenish, um, grayish kind of color to it, which is, um, which is of course matte, as you can see here. So it's a nice blend between the movement and the case, so I think that's nice. Um, the decoration uh, has this um, kind of unusual patterns to it. So what you're looking at here again is is a more unusual movement that of course you, you will not see anywhere else especially not exposed like this uh, on the dial. So if you're looking for something that's uh, that's more um, unique looking mm, this is this is something that may interest you because it certainly is not your average uh, dress watch. Speaking of it being a dress watch, one of the one of the slight issues that I have with this watch is that it's kind it, it's it's pretty thick for a time-only watch with automatic winding. So the case, um, uh, in this case uh, it's titanium as I said, is 43.5 millimeters wide and 15.6 millimeters wide. And that's pretty wide. You will, um, if I put it on, I will show it to you. It's rather difficult to have it slide under a cuff when you want it to or even under uh, the, the sleeve of a jacket for example. So as you can see here it's a large watch and if you have um, a shirt with um, with relatively tight sleeves, it's it's a bit difficult to fit it under there where it's not it's not it, that's not even going to happen. So one thing I wish um, happened is that the watch uh, was a little bit just a tiny little bit uh, thinner than it is now, especially considering that there's um, no extra complication, not, no date, no chronograph, whatever. But for those who like um, a larger watch, a chunkier piece of watch, I think it's nice. Um, it, nicely proportioned and the weight is kept at a minimum with the with the titanium case so you don't have this large uh, chunk of metal just um, moving around um, your wrist. The uh, strap is alligator strap. This actually I will have to know is not the um, not the alligator strap because for some customs reasons or whatever they couldn't ship, uh, ship this, uh, the watch with the alligator strap so it's more like a fake alligator and it's not very nice you you should um, expect to have to receive the watch um, on a much nicely um, done um, uh, strap. The clasp is cool. It has this adapted clasp, which is nicely done. Uh, nice details on it, and it's very comfortable. The inner, inner edges are uh, sort of beveled, so it's not cutting into um, the back of your wrist, which is important. And um, one of the issues I have here, actually, with this design, is that when you when you wear your uh, watch and you have a smaller wrist like I do. What happens is that this part here doesn't doesn't match with the clasp. So, clasp. So you would expect it to be like flat, like this, but it's more like this, and your wrist is not shaped like this. Of course, even of course, if you have a larger wrist and the and the and the uh, alligator strap, the original uh, strap breaks in. You should uh, you should have better wearing comfort. But here, I'm not entirely happy with this 
But again, I guess the uh, the higher quality strap uh, should solve that issue. Timekeeping and uh, and overall, just wearing this watch for a couple of weeks, um, I can say that it's been very accurate. It's COSC certified, so of course you can expect it to fall between minus four and plus six seconds a day. And on the wrist, it was like plus two seconds or thereabouts for me, as I could tell. So you can expect this watch and yourself to be on time, uh, and you can rely on the on the um, on the timekeeping accuracy of of the movement in there, which I think is important. So there you have it, this was a review of the Alumani Mechanograph priced at 12,000 Swiss francs for about 12,400 US dollars and you can see the full review on a blog to watch.com soon, thanks.